First of all, I need to say a huge thank you to coming here to our 32nd annual Wellesley Education Foundation Spelling Bee. As a member of the B Committee, I want to thank you all so much for joining us tonight. As you might recall, last year we were via Zoom. It was a little weird. So we haven't been in person since 2019. One word before we get started. We want everyone to be as safe as possible. And in order to make that happen, the Wellesley Board of Health did recommend that we try to space you all out, which we really did try, and I think we did. Um, and they also asked if we could try to keep the cheering and the yelling to a minimum. So maybe we can do a lot of golf claps in honor of the Masters and Tiger Woods maybe playing, right? Okay, so the Spelling Bee is a beloved Wellesley event that provides an opportunity for our community to come together and to support WEF and the Wellesley Public Schools and its teachers while having fun spelling. First of all, we want to thank Jamie Chisholm, Wellesley High School principal, for hosting the first B. We want to thank him for hosting the first B at the new Wellesley High School since it was built in 2012. So this is pretty exciting. Jamie is also kind enough to reprise his role as timekeeper. Last year, we had to order a tiny Amazon gong, but this year, we have the massive spray gong back. Next, it would not be a B without our beloved MC, Mike Dowling. He has stayed with us through the old high school, Sprague, Zoom, and now the new high school. We are so grateful to your commitment to both WEF and the Spelling Bee, and there is no one we would want as our MC. We also want to thank our judges, who so graciously take time out of their busy schedule to help make sure those championship round words are spelled correctly and are so crucial to this successful event. We have Dr. Mark Ito, principal of the Wellesley Middle School. We have Dr. David Lucier, superintendent of Wellesley Public Schools. We have Lee Petrowski, principal of Sprague Elementary School and our former host. And we're so excited to welcome a new judge this year, Sandy Trock, our new assistant superintendent of curriculum and learning. And now I'm going to thank up, bring up one of our B committee crucial volunteers here, Judy, who's going to continue. Thanks, Jen. Hi, everyone. It's great to see you all in person and in 3D. Um, so Jen and I are co-chairing the B committee this year, and we're so thrilled to have you all. And of course, tonight would not be possible without our incredible Wellesley Education Foundation board members and all the volunteers who made tonight happen, including Alina Nucera, Michelle Davis, Jill Fishman, Janet Gugiamaris, Amy Hernandez, Joanne Hinchley, Nina Conan, Megan LeBlanc, Maytop Osterk, Erica Utinko, and Liz Svedland. Thank you, ladies. But most importantly, we want to thank you all, our generous community, for supporting us through all of this. It's our donors and our spellers who really make this event so special and so treasured in the Wellesley community. And not only is this uh, our 32nd celebration, but also it's a huge fundraising, fundraising success thanks to all of you. So tonight, believe it or not, after such a long break as Jen had mentioned, we have 27 teams and collectively we've raised over $45,000. Thank you all so much for that. So at this time, we would like to recognize some of our marquee gold and platinum sponsors. So our marquee sponsors include Babson College and the Cambridge Trust Charitable Foundation. Our platinum sponsor this year is Wellesley College, and our gold sponsor is Roche Brothers, who has also generously donated those delicious cookies over there. Thank you. 
We're also incredibly grateful to all of our bronze sponsors and our beehive buddies. You'll see a complete list of all our spellers and sponsors on each table. And if you get a chance, thank you all and thank each other for making tonight happen. Now I'd like to introduce Amy Hernandez, who is our president of WEF this year, as well as Megan LeBlanc, who is a former president, also a current friend of WEF. Thanks, ladies. I'm going to speak first and give a little explanation. Um, first, thank you everyone for being here. It feels surreal to actually be doing this after talking about it. Um, you, if you looked in your program, you may have seen that I am um, a former president of WEF and there's a reason for that. Um, in January, um, Amy and I heard the plea from the district for substitutes. Um, and WEF is always looking for more, so, uh, more ways to help the district, and we, Amy and I thought that was the perfect way to do it. So we uh, you know, got registered and started substituting. Um, <laughs> um, it was an amazing experience for everyone. It's still ongoing, um, but it was like a behind-the-scenes glimpse of the dedication and the passion that every, every staff member, every teacher just pours in every single day, and it made me feel even more passionately about the work that WEF does. Um, and during my substitute tour, um, I noticed an open substitute position at Bates as the secretary, and I know enough to know, you know, schools need their secretaries, so I took the sub position and fell in love and found my dream job. And unfortunately, that meant that I had to step down from WEF. Um, but I'm still a friend, so I'm here. Um, Amy probably wishes I would do some more work, but... Um, so I'm going to throw it to her now. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Megan. And I have to say that the experience subbing was amazing. And I like to get into details, as you'll see. And I loved, I was in a third grade classroom. And the kids sitting around commenting, they had to each, two girls and two boys had to um, give positive feedback to a student had, who had read a poem out loud. I thought, that's such an amazing thing to do. What a great idea for kids to receive all that positive feedback all the time. Anyway. Thank you all for being here. I'm so excited that we are live, or in, I keep saying that, but we were live last year on Zoom, but we are in person and it is so exciting. Thank you for being here. Um, as many of you know, for over 35 years, we have ded WEF has de dedicated um, advancing in innovation and excellence to the Wellesley Public Schools. Tonight, we have PTOs, nonprofit community groups, sports teams, high school and middle school teams, local businesses, town committees, police, and firefighters, all here to support our schools along with us. Thank you for all valuing the education of our children. This year, we, are, we proudly awarded over 250,000 in grants to Wellesley Public Schools. These grants, along with the past ones, um, begin with the innovative ideas of our educators and our administrators. It all comes from them. Um, I chose a few grants to highlight. Like I said, I like to get into details, um, just to show what grants look like in the classroom. As part of the district's pro uh, project-based learning initiative, we funded podcasters for our elementary schools. Among other things, this has allowed our young students to collaborate with each other to present weather videos based on information they researched about the climate. So many skills were learned here. How to speak in front of an audience, like I'm doing now how to navigate technology, how to work together, how to persuade your audience. What an amazing project for our young students. In the middle school, we supported robotics hardware, allowing our students to write computer programs to construct a robust and mechanically functional robot. Wow. <laughs> students learned how to apply code on two-dimensional screen to complex three-dimensional movement. The problem-solving skills and the critical thinking learned here will last a lifetime. In the high school, we supported infrared cameras for our physics classes. These cameras get students excited and engaged in the classroom. They are able to visualize concepts not visible to the naked eye, and it allows our high schoolers to act as authentic scientists. How cool. 
In addition to the specific grants like these, we also support district-wide initiatives. We're so excited about the cutting-edge professional development, sorry, professional development opportunities that will be provided for our teachers this year and next. In addition, last year in our COVID Innovation Fund, we raised and contributed almost $600,000 to help keep students and teachers safe in all 10 of our schools. <laughs> None of these grants would be possible without the creative ideas from our educators and the support of our community at events like this evening's. I want to again thank our wonderful B committee and our B chairs, Jen Fallon and Judy Walsh, um, Megan LeBlanc, who's now just a friend, <laughs> and that is a technical term in the Wellesley in the WEF bylaws. She's a friend. We voted her as a friend, um, and the entire Spelling Bee committee for working so hard to make this event a success. And thank you also to all the other WEF board members that are here volunteering tonight. Again, thanks again. We truly appreciate your ongoing commitment to the Wellesley Education Foundation. And now I'll turn it back to the B chair so we can get on with the B. Thank you, Amy. Okay, if I've learned one thing is being a mom is sometimes things go awry and you kind of have to fix things on the fly. So due to a tiny technical difficulty, some of you may not know what round you're in. You might say, what round am I in? So between kind Mr. Dowling and the other B chairs, we'll make sure everybody gets up when you need to. What Mike's going to do kindly is list the spellers per round. So thank you everyone for kind of going with the punches. So. We're gonna have four rounds to start with. When your name is called for your round, we're gonna have you go up here and sit with your team. The person who should sit in the middle of each table is gonna be the person who will be your scribe. So when you hear the word spoken by Mike, that person will write it down. Now you can chit chat, talk amongst yourself, just be careful, you don't want the other people to hear your correct spelling of the word. You're gonna have 20 seconds, and then Jamie will do this. And that will be pencils down. So as the gong is ringing, you should make sure that you have your word and Vogue spelled out on the whiteboard. And you're going to hold it up towards the judges. The judges are kindly going to check all of the whiteboards and they will point and they will, along with Mike, help call out who's correct and who's got an incorrect word. Dr. Lucier had a great point. If you could write large and legible. So I'm sure some of you have wonderful cursive handwriting, but you can write nice and large and legible because you do not want to get out on a technicality, right? And if you do happen to spell your word incorrectly, which unfortunately will happen, you're going to just turn down your table tent. See, I forgot to tell you, you're going to need to bring up your table tent when you come up so the judges know what team you are. So for instance, if WHS Evolution's number one be curious, when they come up, they'll bring their table tent, they'll put it here. As soon as the word is spelled incorrectly, you'll flip it down. And you'll just sit here um, until there is only one correct team in that round. And then the winner of each round will come up and we will have a championship round. And Judy is going to come up here and she's going to give you just a bit more details about that and a few other exciting things we have. Thanks, Jen. All right, so we have to have some fun here because I see lots of amazing costumes. After round four, we are going to be awarding a Team Spirit Best Costume Award. It's not too late to dash out if you left it in your car. Yes. Okay, so that is gonna be for the team that has shown the most enthusiasm through your golf claps, as well as the best costume of the evening. And the winner does have to be present to win, so please stay the whole evening. Um, the other thing that we're gonna be offering again is our try it again ticket. So for some reason, you're kicking yourself because you just got your A and your E confused or something like that, and you just got knocked out, it's okay, right? So you can actually purchase tickets at our try it again table, um, or we've got roving helpers, and it's $5 for a try if you want to try it again and get into the championship round. That is like the deal of the century, guys, $5. 
The last thing we're going to do is at the conclusion of round four, we're also going to just draw one lucky team from a box of names, and that, per that team will be eligible also for the championship round. So do not count yourselves out. You can still have a chance for bragging rights for this year's B. Um, okay, good. And then, of course, only original team members, please. So we're just going to go with the OGs. The other really exciting thing that we are doing new this year is, if you haven't met, noticed, well, one, we're actually here in April, so this is really a spring bee, hence the theme and all the flowers. But also, we just looked for other opportunities just to liven things up. So, we have an amazing silent auction going on over the table over there. So buy the cookies, which are amazing. But there's a silent auction, and those things include, for anybody who's a little bit behind on summer camp plans, one free week at Camp Enioc, which is Lynx Camps, is new camp, and it's incredible. It's um, their outdoor camp that they're just founding. And so you can be a pioneer there. They have offered us generously a week there. We also have an electric ride on car that seats two kids, if anybody's interested in that. And Isabel Harvey has generously donated some jewelry, as well as a 15% off coupon for anybody who wants to get some shopping on. We also have two private wine parties so that were generously donated by Total Wine, and those can be for up to 20 guests each. So please go check out that silent auction table. We promise it'll be worth it. Um, lastly, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you the man of the hour, our master of ceremonies, Mike Dowling. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Jen and Judy and Amy and Megan and the whole group for all the work you guys put in. I'm, I'm actually still amazed that we pulled off the B last, when was it now? Was it a year and a half ago? It was a year and a half ago. Yeah, a year and a half ago. That was so much work by you guys. That was awesome. So again, thank you for that. Okay. So I'm going to give you some facts about the B, but I'm going to get the first round's teams up here first, okay? So if you listen, I'm going to call them in order, and you'll go first team, second, third, all the way up, and don't forget to bring your team name with you, okay? So here is Sustainable Wellesley is first. Second is uh, the Wellesley Fire and Rescue. Third is the Wellesley High School Principals. The fourth is Wellesley Police Department, Wellesley School Committee, Wellesley Select Board, and last but certainly not least, Wilder Shea and Himmelberger. Okay, while we're all getting settled here, I just want to remind everybody, you know, this is the 32nd year that we've done this, and that we've had, we've had uh, 24 winners. So in other words, we've had a number of multiple winners. In fact, four we've had back-to-back -back winners. Um, Mount Holyoke alumni were one of the first winners. They won three times, 91, 93, 94. Wellesley Green Team, Council on Aging, Booty Racious. We've had college winners, Harvard Radcliffe alumni won twice. Coldwell Banker won twice, BC alumni won, Wellesley College won, Babson won, the high school juniors won, the high school seniors won. And then the elementary schools were represented, uh, the middle school staff won, and Upham, Honeywell, and Bates all had winning teams. So I guess we need to get Hardy and the other elementary schools to get teams, or better teams, one or the other. Okay, so I'm going to introduce the uh, team members. Hopefully, it's, you're the same members as it says on my sheet. <laughs> Chris Crowley, Elizabeth Humber, and Katie Smith-Millway. Excellent. Sustainable Wellesley. Wellesley Fire and Rescue, Richard DeLore, Paul Delaney, and Jeffrey Peterson. Okay. Wellesley High School Principals, Drew Kelton, Sarah Matloff, and Colin Shattuck. Drew, you're so good, you're here every year, aren't you? You've been here a long time. Not that long, not as long as me, but yeah, yeah. Um, Wellesley Police Department, I've got one name, Kathy Poirier, and then TBD, T <laughs> and the dog, we probably should introduce the dog. Wellesley School Committee, Craig Mack, Melissa Martin, and Catherine Myrick. Uh, Wellesley Select Board, Colette O'Frank, Tom Olfelder, and Marjorie Fre Freeman. Freeman. Freeman, I know Marjorie. And this team, have you guys been in it every year? 
Well, you maybe missed one year, but they have been here almost every year. Wilder Shea and Himmelberger, Brooks Goddard, Jeannie Goddard, and David Himmelberger. I think you guys were here the first year, though, weren't you? Yeah, you were, Jeannie. Okay, that's good. You can cover for David. Okay, so we're going to have a practice word each round. Okay, it doesn't count. And I usually had gone with a the theme in these in previous years. So here's, I, w I was making it too easy on you, even though I tried to boost your confidence. But we're going to take words that were used as winning words from previous spelling bees. So they're going to be hard, okay? So then when you get an easy word first, you'll feel confident, okay? The first word is, this is a practice again, practice, okay? Supernaculum. Supernaculum. This was in 1991. That was the winner, that was the word that won for, I think it was for Mount Holyoke. In fact, it was for Mount Holyoke. Supernaculum. You're going to get five nice, Jamie. Okay. You're right. So are you guys. You're not. You forgot a you. You, you knew that. Supernaculum. I can't even read the police, right? <laughs> Make it nice and neat. Maybe you should be the writer. <laughs> Okay, everybody did pretty good. I think we got, most people got that one. So very good. Okay, all right. Now we're gonna go to the easy word. So how we do this, as you probably know, we have one easy word, we have three mid-level words, and we have four uh, difficult words, okay? So the easy word, charitable. Charitable, full of love for and goodwill towards others. Charitable. Everybody all set? I think everybody's looking pretty good. How are we doing, judges? Everybody in? All right. Okay, good job. Pressure's off. You didn't miss the first word. Okay, mid-level words. The next word is ennui. I know, I can't believe it's a mid-level word. Feeling of weariness and dissatisfaction. Combined with the dead of winter in Chicago, this lack of sports washing can lead to an overwhelming feeling of ennui, sending ordinary sports fans into a sinkhole. Five seconds. How'd they do down here? I didn't, I didn't catch them. Follows, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> How'd down there do? All right, good. Okay, so turn over, okay, you turned it over and, yeah, <laughs> okay. Please turn your, uh, turn your name over, sorry. You guys did a great job, but all right. The next word is gargantuan. Tremendous in size, volume, or degree. People seem to be buying ever more gargantuan SUVs these days. Garga gargantuan. Five seconds. Okay, turn it over. Looks good down here. How about over here? Yep, yeah? okay. Next word. Abby Sidarius. Abby, it's more like Abby Sidarius. A poem in which the lines or stanzas begin with the letters of the alphabet in regular order, such as Chaucer's ABC. Abby Sidarius is an ancient poetic form guided by alphabetical order. <laughs> okay. I gotta look down here. Yeah, that's good. You're good. No, no, it was close. Okay, so we lost. We lost two more. Oh, three more. Wait, we got one. We got a champ. We got a winner. 
Very good. Very good. Okay, you could all clear out and go back and buy yourself a ticket so you can get the championship, right? Where are those tickets being sold? Okay, the next round. Community fund for Wellesley, right here. Kurtzman and Wheel, right here. Sorry, there is no Kurtzman and Wheel. Pinnacle Residential is second. Rutledge Properties, third. Wellesley Hills Junior Women's Club, fourth. Wellesley Middle School Teachers, fifth. And Wellesley Service League, sixth. Mike Dom and Liz. Okay, Mike Dom and Liz. Okay. Okay, so you are... Dee Dee, Lindsay, and Gracie. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay, Rutledge Properties, Susie Gear, Janet Geiser, and L. Prouda. No? Okay. Um, Wellesley Hills Junior Women's Club. So, oh, Sam Giuliano, Amanda Burke, and Sarah Close. Okay, all right, good. Middle school teachers. Smells like teen spirit. Drew Bourne, Carrie Sierra, and Val Stark. Nah, yeah. Like true middle schoolers. Selfie, selfie. <laughs> Quick, put it on Instagram. And the last one, Wellesley Service League, Nora, Pow, Sheila Olson, and a TBD, whatever your name is. Okay. All right. Here we go. So again, I've picked a winning word out from 30 years ago. This was the winning word. This is how far, actually, the, bell, the, the B has come. Because to me, this sounds like an easy word. But the word was bantamize. Bantamize. Again, practice word. Okay, no pressure. Take your time. Even the gong won't eliminate you. <laughs> Bantamize. This is a good practice word, I think. Okay. You're supposed to wait till the gong just to let you know, but that's all right. You're, you got it. You're good. You're good. You're good. Yep. Well, go ahead. Take, yeah, it's easy. There you go. Okay. I think everybody was good there. All right. Here we go. Again, one easy word. Three mid-levels and four difficult words. The easy word is unicorn. Unicorn. A mythical, usually white animal, generally depicted with the body and head of a horse with long flowing mane and a tail and a, and a horn. Would you wait till the buzzer, please? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Someone may be looking for that. Yeah, everybody's got that, right? Okay. Did you get it? Okay. All right, good. On to the, on to the mid-level word. Okay, it's loo. The definition is instead. Do pigs ever wonder why their masters walk upright in loo of going on all fours? Loo. It's a nice, easy one. Five seconds. Okay, turn it over. L-I-E-U. Yep, L-I-E-U. Yep. Everybody in? Okay. Uh, the next word is illuminate. To supply or brighten with light. Part of the moon is illuminated by the sun, but it's actually just illuminate. Five seconds. Everybody down there, good? All right, okay, good. The next word is thespian, an actor. Although she's acted in a couple of horror movies, I'd hardly call her one of our more promising thespians. Again, it's just singular, thespian. Five seconds. Wait till the gong. All righty. Yep, I think everybody's got this. Yeah, everybody good down there? All right. Okay, the difficult words. Apo aposeopesis. Aposeopesis. 
A figure of speech wherein a sentence is deliberately broken off and left unfinished, the ending to be supplied by the imagination. An example of opasiopesis would be the threat, get out or else. Five seconds. Yep. No. Let's see. No. We, we might have a winner. No, you didn't get it. I think we have a winner. Right? Huh? Down at the end, I think, is our winner, isn't it? No? No. Didn't someone have an eye? So they're all out? No, no, they're all back in. No one down here got it right at the end? Oh, okay. Okay, you're all back in. The word is daguerreotypes, an early photograph produced on a silver or a silver-covered copper plate. The daguerreotype was the first commercially successful photographic process in the history of photo photography. It, it's actually plural, too. I don't know why they give me these sentences that don't match the tense or the singular and plural. Ooh, that was quick. Ooh, I think you're good. No. Anybody get it right? I don't know, judges. Do we have somebody? Two? Okay. Okay, the next word. So we're down here, right? Everybody else turn their... Uh... Okay, down here, and the word is delicatessen. Ready to eat food products such as cooked meats and prepared salads. The delicatessen originated in Germany during the 18th century and spread to the U.S. in mid-19th century. Five seconds. Three seconds, and let's see it. They both got it? Okay. The word is phosphorus to exhibit phosphorescence and enduring luminescence without sensible heat. The radium itself does not phosphoresce. Five seconds. I think we have a winner, don't we? No, they both got it? Nice, middle school teachers. <laughs> okay. Booty Racius, which actually happened to be the name of the winning team about five years ago. Booty Racius, of the nature of resembling or containing butter. Booty Racius. Five seconds, one second. All right, let's see it. I think they both got it, didn't they? Or not, yeah? Okay. Good job. Okay. The next word is obstreperous. Obstreperous, noisy and difficult to control. The boy is cocky and obstreperous. Five seconds, two seconds, and let's see it. They're both good, aren't they? Okay, very, very well done. The next word is carcajou, another term for the North American wolverine. The carcajou is a member of the weasel family and it lives in cold northern latitudes. Five seconds. Feeling pretty good, middle school. Yep, they got it. Very good, very good. Okay, the next word is 
obloquy, a strongly condemnatory utterance or abusive language. Terrified by the storm of obloquy which he aroused, he fled from the office. Yeah, okay. Next word is formaldehyde, a chemical used in industry and for preserving dead bodies and body parts. Students dissected fish that had been preserved in formaldehyde. Five seconds. Both got it, okay. The next word is anabibazon, the ascending node of the moon's orbit with the ecliptic. The anabibazon has been studied by astronomers for centuries. Anabibazon. Five seconds. Oh, they both made a mistake, didn't they? They made the same mistake. So you're both back in. No colluding over there. Okay, the next word is gay gun chain. A patch of very uh, faint religious light, sometimes seen in the night sky opposite the position of the sun. The gay gun chain. Five seconds. They both got it wrong, didn't they? The next word is plenaloon, the time of the full moon. Teachers reported that their students were extra rambunctious during the plenaloon. Five seconds. Yeah, okay. Cumulonimbus. Cumulonimbus, a cloud having a low base and often spread out in the shape of an anvil extending to great heights. The, the clouds typically form as a result of air turbulence with large cumulonimbus structures. Five seconds, two seconds, one second. Both of them got it? The teachers got it? I thought they had an I in there, no? They have two U's? Okay, all right. The next word is cyclocyte, an abnormal red blood cell of a crescent shape. The patient with sickle cell anemia wanted to see a cyclocyte under the microscope. Five seconds, three seconds. They both miss it? Huh? They, they both missed it? There will be no colluding over there. Okay. The next word is cochleariform, shaped like a spoon. Some of the best fitting earbuds, earbuds have a cochleiform. Excuse me, cochleariform. Cochleariform is the word. Five. Both. Okay. Okay, the next word is Ardwolf. A, a maned, stripped, nocturnal mammal of southern and eastern Africa that resembles the related hyenas and feeds chiefly on insects and especially termites. Ardwolf. Five seconds. Okay, you both advance to the championship round. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Okay, round three. Brookline Bank, 
friend, excuse me, friends of Wellesley Metco is first, Honeywell Elementary School second, Schofield third, Upham fourth, Wellesley High School class of 2022, and the Wellesley Middle School grade eight. Six teams here. Uh, I do have, though, the friends of Wellesley Metco, Marvels. Yes, that is Susan Westmoreland, Joanne Marrera, and Tinia Rochelle. Okay. Honeywell, I have your names. Kathleen Stevens, Michelle Shaw, and Kristen Devent Devaney. Okay. Schofield, I got nothing. Schofield Spellars, okay? Th this way, if you go out early, no one will know. <laughs> right, okay. Upham is next, led by Kate McGeo. Closing, okay. Yeah, this might be the last one. Is this the last one of well uh, Upham? Two more, okay. Plenty of time. Wellesley High School, let's see, Bates. There's no way I have any of your names, but anyway, we are very glad to have you here. Brookline Bank, I don't think I have any of yours either. And um, who's at the end there? Wellesley High School, grade eight. I don't have any of your names here either, but excellent. Okay, so we're gonna start our practice word here is uh, the winning word from 2020, passamentary. Passamentary. Don't ask for a sentence or, or definition. I have no idea what it means. But they got it right on the Zoom, Zoom competition. I have no idea. It's just a practice word, okay? So don't, yeah, no, no pressure. Five, two seconds, one second. Okay, see how you did. There, there was an E instead of an I. Yeah, you guys weren't close, but that's all right. It's just, a, it's, it's just a practice word. And it's an E instead of an A. You guys did pretty good, I think. Anyway, you all did great, okay? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Weren't you guys judges a year and a half ago? Come on, you forget the winning word? What is this? Okay, here we go. Let's, let's start with an easy word. Echoed. The repetition of a sound caused by reflection of sound waves. Echoed. Five seconds. Okay. Yep, good, good, good. Yep, I think everybody's good, aren't they? Excellent, excellent, okay. Here we go to some mid-level words. Ecstatic, feeling or expressing overwhelming happiness or joyful excitement. Ecstatic. Everybody in, okay, good job, good job. The next word is topiary. Um, the gardens are very formal with topiary hedges, statues, hidden paths, and borders. Topiary. Five seconds. Okay. Yep, everybody looks good, huh? All right, good. The next word is lackadaisical. Lacking life, spirit, or zest. His teachers did not approve of his lackadaisical approach to homework. Five seconds. Okay, let's see what you got. L A C K, no, it's L A C K, no. Okay, so no. So you guys are in, right? Yeah, they're in. How about everybody else down here? Eighth graders? Nice. You know. <laughs> And Brookline Bank. And eighth graders, you don't even know the meaning of lackadaisical, right? No, you don't know. That, that's not in your vocabulary. Keep it out of your vocabulary. Okay, we go to the difficult words here. 
Sfumato. Sfumato. Leonardo da Vinci used a technique called sfumato that created softness in his portraits. Five seconds. So we got one, three teams left here. Yes. Were they all in? Yeah. Good. I think, weren't they? Bates get it right? Turn it over. Yeah? I, I didn't think you got it right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, turn your, uh, your team over. Thanks. Okay, we're down to two teams here. Limnon, to draw or paint on a surface. The artist limned a good likeness of his wife, but the word is limnon. Limnon. It tells me it's two syllables. Probably shouldn't say that, but I'm, I'm covering my butt. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, you both. Yeah, it's L-I-M-N. I'm just reading it the way they tell me. Limnon. I should have just ignored it and said limn. Okay. Zero colis. Tolerant of very dry conditions. A cactus is zero colis. Five seconds. Yes and no. The eighth graders advance. <laughs> it was a no-win situation for you. <laughs> okay, eighth graders. Take a break. You got one round before you come back for the championship round. Very well done. <laughs> Okay, round four. Wellesley High School class of 2023 is first. 25 is second. High school PTSO is third. High school evolution, evolutions team number two is fourth. Improv troop is fifth. Wellesley High senior class officer sixth. And Wellesley High School Stuco is seventh. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Let me introduce Wellesley High School class of 2023 right here. Big shoes to fill for those eighth graders, you know. Uh, Livy Fletcher, Aiden Ullian, and TBD. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> You're sponsored by Coldwell Banker Realty. Thank you very much, Coldwell Banker. Um, 2025, sponsor Liz Larson and Mike Kim. Even though, is Liz Larson sneaking in at the end? Okay. Uh, Paula Dalzell, Asia Foland, and Augie Kim. Oh, I hate when they're not in the right order. That's. Who did I just introduce? Oh, all the way down there? Okay. Anyway. Uh, okay, so you guys are Stuco. Yeah, you're, you're, where are you? Yeah. So you are Van I Kapoor, Howard, Zoo, and TBD. You TBD again? <laughs> okay. You're on every team. There. No, no, no. Pay attention, would you please? Okay. Improv troupe. Okay, this is really Brendan Altoff, Caroline Mack, and William Takahashi. Jamie, I hate to tell you, but these kids aren't taking instructions well. These teams are all over the place. Um, okay, who's next here? Let's see. Be curious. Uh, where are you? What, what, what's your real name? Oh, Evolutions, okay. Yeah, Hadley, Geyser, Catherine Fishman, and Vandana Mandela. Okay. Then we got an Evolutions 2, sponsored by Stephen and Nancy Braun, Rory Morton, Andres Santos, and TBD again. There's one on each team. Yeah, you're the most popular guy here. Okay. Senior class officers, Abraham Budson, Audrey Turco, and 
You got it, TBD. Okay. And let's see, this is, who is that down there again? What is it? Oh, 2025, okay. Paula Dalzell, Asia Folan, and Augie Kim. Okay. All right. So here's another winning word from a number of years ago. Requiescence. It's just a practice word, no pressure. Requiescence. Five seconds. I think I forgot to, I forgot to. Okay, let's see what you got. Uh, I think you all did pretty well. Except, come on, how can you put an I after a Q? <laughs> oh, she's throwing them under the bus first round. It's just a practice word. Okay. Uh, anyway, you all did great. Okay, here we go. Uh, the easy word is fandangle. This counts for real. An ornate or fantastic ornament. Filled with fluff and fandangle, it is a lovely way to spend a summer's afternoon. Fandangle. Five seconds. Okay, let's see it. That's an L, yeah, okay. Everybody good? All righty. Okay, here we go. Mid-level word, euphoria. A feeling of getting the first word right is euphoria. You weren't eliminated. Five seconds. Okay. Yep. All good? Okay. Okay. The word is samurai. A military retainer of a Japanese daimyo practiced the code of conduct. Uh, his great grandfather's samurai sword and traditional armor was delivered to him from Tokyo. Sam, five, five seconds. Twenty twenty we lost twenty twenty three. Everybody else was good? Oh they're all waving to you twenty twenty three. Okay. The next word is cesspool. An underground reservoir for liquid waste. Over the decades the once respectable neighborhood had become an urban cesspool. Five seconds. So did we lose you guys too? No. Yep. Everybody got that? Okay. Okay, we're going to the hard words now, difficult words. Sphagnum. Last summer she gathered sphagnum moss on the moors. Any of an order of atypical mosses that grow only in wet acid. Sphagnum. Five seconds. Sphagnum. No. Yeah, it's it's S P H. That's wrong. Huh? Yeah, so that's No, no, that's wrong. So you're wrong. Right? So you guys are good and you guys are good. No, you guys are not good. Are we down to 2 then? Or did the last no? Okay. Turn your uh Turn your team name over, please. Okay, so we're down to two, right? Okay. Yeah, 
right next to you, the improv troupe. What a comeback from the practice work. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, the next word is salicetum, a collection or plantation of living willows. There is a beautiful salicetum by the lake. <clears throat> salicetum. Five seconds, probably. Less than that. Let's see it. I think they're both back in, aren't they? They're both back in. Huh? Yeah, they're both wrong. They're both back in. Yeah, yeah. Boccaccio, a large rockfish of the Pacific coast, locally import as a market fish. Boccaccio. Boccaccio. Five seconds. Boccaccio. I think we have a winner. We have a winner, the improv troupe. <laughs> okay, if you guys want, you could just stay up there because we're moving right to the championship round. You know what, do me a favor. Do me a favor and move two uh, tables down. Yeah, please. Okay, everybody. It's if I if I can have everyone's attention, please. It's time for the championship round. So if you're interested in the last chance raffle, raise your hand. We have a few already. It's five dollars each. Are we good? Okay. While we're figu while we're figuring that out, just a reminder about the silent auction over there. We have some great gifts. So don't forget about that. And it's time to announce the costume winners. Are they still here? Oh, last chance raffle, anyone? Uh-oh. Oh, they are. And I wanted to announce the um, costume winners. The Wellesley Middle School teachers. What were you called? Lo loved the selfies. The selfies did it. It was great. Can I have that Wellesley book? The bag. The Wellesley book. The bag. The bag. Yeah. It was the selfies. I was like. Slow down. I don't know how to do it though. I don't know I'm not young. I'm old. <laughs> we could take all night. Come on, Val. Get in there. All right. All right. <laughs> Here, you Posted. get some. Tag me. <laughs> Wait, when you went Doing it for the gram. Look at that girl. Like, taking all those steps. <laughs> well, that actually was just me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this is so fun. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six. I don't care. It's fine. That's it. Do you guys have your uh, team name? Team card? Okay, I think we are ready to go. Again, Sustainable Wellesley, grade eight. High School Evolutions number two, Robot and the Ready Readies, Improv Troop. The, uh, I think that's the middle school teachers. Spells like Teen Spirit, yeah. And Service League, Wellesley Service League. Okay, first of all, congratulations on, on making the championship round. Excellent, very good. Three high school teams and three adult teams. Excellent, this is good. Well, in middle school, but they're adults, you know. Huh? Yeah, one, two, three. They're middle school. 
Oh, Mesa, hey, you know, yeah, but they're as smart as a high school kid, so. Right? I'm putting my money on you guys. Okay, here we go. No practice words. We're starting right in, okay? The first word is veniniferous. Bearing or transmitting poison and especially a natural venom. A rattlesnake is a veniniferous creature. These are hard words, so don't feel bad if you don't get it. Five seconds. Okay, let's see it. Ooh, that's not right. That's not right. That's not right. That's not right. Did anybody get it right? They all got it wrong. The last one, they got it wrong too? Okay, you're all back in. The next word is vadilicet. That is to say, namely, the meaning of the Constitution is determined by the one and only body, vadilicet, the U.S. Supreme Court. Vadilicet. Yeah, vadilicet. Vadilicet. Vidalicet. No, no, no. No, it was VI. They all wrong? All wrong. You're all back in again. Nastalic. Nastalic is one of the main calligraphic hands used in writing the Persian alphabet. Nastalic. Five seconds. This is a hard one. Nope. 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 Ooh. The eighth graders, I think, have it. Do they or not? No, no, they don't. Anybody get it right? Nobody has it. Okay. Devondva. Devondva. Examples of Devondva. Words are as bittersweet, secretary, treasure, socio-political. Five seconds. No. 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 Oh, my gosh. They all got it wrong again? Did they all get it wrong? Should we go back to the intermediate words? <laughs> I don't know, I just take my cues from the boss. Should we just keep on going with these? Okay, okay, all right. The word is discalced. Unshod barefoot. The discalced friars were easy to spot walking around with their long robes and bare feet. Discalced. Five seconds. Discalced. No. Yes, you got it. We got one down here. Two, three, and no. We got three. Okay, good job. Okay. Okay. The word is omfra omfrobolus. Ombrophilus, excuse me. Ombrophilus, capable of withstanding or thriving in the presence of much rain. The Amazon is full of ombrophilus plants. Five seconds. No, no, why? Anybody get it down there? Huh? They, they both missed it? Okay. Repachage is the next word. Repachage. The winner of each repachage will face the runner-up and the other with the two victors awarded bronze medals. Repachage. Five seconds. 
Okay, we're down to two. Wells, huh? Wellesley Service League and Sustainable Wellesley. Okay. I only got two more championship words left. <laughs> and then we'll go back. But no, fine. We got plenty of hard words. Okay. Imperial, of or relating to the Empyrean celestial. You may have sent the famous painting depicting the deity as seated on an imperial throne surrounded by saints and angels. Five seconds. Imperial. No, and no, but there's a Y in there. Okay, here's the word. Nectopelagic, nectopelagic, pertaining to organisms that migrate into surface waters at night. Nectopelagic. Five seconds. No, and why? Both of them missed it, right? Okay, we're going back. Okay, the word is takur, one affected with a tick. The takur was self-conscious about his condition and preferred the seclusion of his home. Takur, five seconds. There's an H. No. Did they get it? Service League? No, they didn't get it? Okay. All right, you're both back in. Okay. The word is quaquaversal. Yeah, I'm just reading them. The contractor laid the tiles in a quaquaversal fashion, starting in the center. Quaquaversal. Five seconds. Yeah, they both got it. Okay. Next word is solitaraneous. Some of the most devastating natural disasters have been solitaraneous events. Solitaraneous. Five seconds, three. Yeah, I think they both got it, right? Okay, very good. The next word is ichnolite, a stone presenting the impression of the foot of a fossil animal, a fossil footprint. The archeologist uncovered several ichnolites except this is singular, ichnolite, on a recent dig. Five seconds. Yep, both good, huh? She didn't get it? There are champs right here, Sustainable Wellesley. Very well done, very well done. Your name will be on the trophy.